June 2008. A Sterling, Illinois man goes on a killing rampage from Illinois all the way down to Festus, Missouri. This is a story of Nicholas Sheely. Hello, happy Friday, August 18th. (laughs) We've only got, what, maybe a week? Two weeks left in September. Wow, welcome to Kelly's Coffee and Crime Chat. This is Kelly, and boy, I have a case for you today, and of course it's a case I never heard of. I don't know how I missed this one, but um, it was featured on my favorite, one of my favorite shows called See No Evil on ID, and it was um, in, on well, wait a minute. It's the episode, what? Well, sorry. Season 5, episode 10. Now, season 5, I'm thinking that's the new season, but I always get confused how many there are. And I think this aired in January. <clears throat> January, excuse me. But anyway, I am drinking today Java Mama Pumpkin Pecan Waffles. This coffee is so good. It's like you're eating pumpkin waffles with pecans and maple syrup. It is so good. Mm. This was last year's coffee, believe it or not, and it is still good. It's a K-cup, and I keep, you know, I mean, I've got so much coffee. Yeah, I've, I've still got last year's, <laughs> but it's still good. Even the ground, some of the ground coffee I have is really good. I have a huge, huge supply, so... um. This one's very, very good. It is one of my favorites from last fall besides the pumpkin spice. They also have another one called the Witch's Back that they, I'm hoping they bring it back again because I think that's one that they bring back every time and that's a good one also. And it's kind of like a pumpkin spice too. And oh, it's so good. I forgot exactly what the, what the flavors are, but, um, cause that one didn't last long (laughs) last year. So this case today Oh, first of all, I want to mention again, um, less than, but a little less than two more weeks left in August. I'm still having my giveaway. I have my giveaway through August and you earn, um, entries by leaving me, um, a review on Apple podcast, um, rate me on, um, Spotify. Um, the other way is share my podcast to your Instagram or Facebook and if you're on Instagram follow my Facebook page Kelly's Coffee and Crime Chat and if you're on Facebook my Facebook page follow me on my Instagram page which is at Kelly's Coffee Crime Kelly's Coffee Crime Chat sorry (laughs) Um, if you do any of these please let me know Either send me a message on Instagram or um, let me know on Facebook because I need to know so that I don't leave anybody out of the giveaway. Um, I just got a a, a new review and I want to thank Pam for that review. I'm not sure who Pam is, but Pam, if you're listening, if you want in my giveaway, please, please let me know and I will put your name in and I just need a way to get a hold of you in case you win. <laughs> But um, I would like to put you in, but I just don't know exactly who you are if you are a host of another podcast. I tried to search for Pam A in my um, um, Facebook and Instagram and nothing came up. So I want to make sure that I find, if you are interested in the giveaway, you just, what I'm doing is I'm doing a drawing, you win a free t-shirt. So that is the giveaway. Now, today's case... uh, I, again, I cannot believe I did not hear about this with it taking place in Illinois. And it really was not too long ago. I mean, okay, maybe some people think it was long ago. I don't, but it took place in 2008. Um, my sources are, besides IDs, see no evil, uh, themidwestcrimefiles.com. 
And also, um, I did read it on Wikipedia. I didn't use anything out of there, I don't think, but I may have dropped maybe a sentence or two in here <clears throat> that I read on there, and I may have written down um, some notes on that. I can't really remember if I did, um, because I read that, and then I watched ID's See No Evil, and boy, this highly recommended episode they really tell you a lot in this episode that I didn't know. So, now, this is about Nicholas Sheely. Okay, Nicholas Troy Sheely was born July 31st, 1979. His parents are James and Deborah. He's been in trouble for a lot of his adult life, probably his whole adult life. Um, for drugs and alcohol. Also, he had been arrested and served time for domestic battery, robbery, and weapons charges. Now, this was in 1999, so he'd have been 20. <clears throat> 19 or 20, depending on when all of this happened. He served 90 days in jail for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. In the year 2000, he got six years for aggravated robbery in 2003, aggravated battery, which was later dismissed. In 2006, he was charged with home invasion, aggravated battery, and armed robbery. Again, dismissed. I don't know how these charges are dismissed. Um, I don't know if the person didn't uh, press charges or what. But in 2007, also dismissed, were charges of a home invasion, discharging a firearm, and felony weapon possession. He got married in the 90s and had two kids before divorcing in 2001. Now, this is his first wife. And his first wife filed a protect, uh, filed two protective orders against him. One was in 1997 and the other one was in the year 2000. While he was serving time, Nicholas met Holly Gaul, G-A-U-L. Um, I'm not sure how he met her. I don't know if it was, this was uh, 2000. Well, it says while he was serving time. So I'm not exactly sure. Um, there wasn't Facebook. I don't I don't even think we had MySpace then. If it was before 2000. This was before 2003. Um, so I'm not sure exactly how he met her. Maybe through letters. I know he had pen pals. In 2003, he, he filed a restraining order against her. Against Holly. I'm not... I mean, I'm thinking... When he was serving time, maybe when he got in trouble in 99. Well, then he got in trouble again in 2003, 2006. So this was in 2003 when he was in. Well, no, that was later dismissed. He had six years in 2000 for aggravated, aggravated robbery, something, and that's when he met her. And then in 2003 was when he filed a restraining order against her. So he'd have been out by then. It was dismissed. Um... The, he had two kids with her, so now he's got four kids. And they married in um, 2008, which was, it was on May 10th. Now, June 3rd of 2008, he was driving on a revoked license under the influence. So he was arrested. Um, he also robbed an elderly woman while waiting for the court proceedings for the DUI that I just said, that he was um, driving under the influence on a um, revoked license. So while he was waiting for that, he robbed an elderly woman. Oh, gosh. They end up losing their home, him and his wife, and they moved to a trailer on Holly's mother's property. So it's, it's Nicholas' mother-in-law. Now, her mom, Holly's mom, said they are not to drink alcohol or do drugs while they're on the property, while they're living there, or on the property. <clears throat> Everything was fine. They did not do anything until, until they took out a loan to buy drugs and alcohol, and it was a loan for $1,000. On that day, that same day, this was June 23rd, 2008, Nicholas went into a relapse of his addiction and went over the edge. So when they moved into the trailer on Holly's mom's property, there was no drugs and alcohol, and then he started to relapse. Now, Russell Reed, a widower, his wife had passed away in 1995. They had two sons. He was a farmer on the same land for 70 years in Sterling, Illinois. 
He had no enemies and never locked his doors. Nicholas Sheely had gotten scrap metal from him before and knew he kept money, cash, in this house. Nicholas went in, right into his house and beat 93-year-old Russell Reed to death for more drug money. He put his body in the trunk of Russell's vehicle. Russell was found on June 26th. So this was three days later. Two days later after this, Nicholas robbed 65-year-old Ronald Randall at a car wash in Galesburg, Illinois. Now, he hid his body at a Hy-Vee store behind the Hy-Vee store next to a dumpster, and then he stole his truck. Ronald was born April 17, 1943. He was a U.S. Army veteran. He retired in 2004, he had 30 years at Maytag, which closed back then. I remember that was the year that Maytag had closed. He was a father and a grandfather. That night of June 28th, Nicholas used Ronald's truck and drove to Rock Falls. Now, when I looked at the map, I didn't understand this. He went from Sterling to Galesburg, then back up north to Rock Falls. Now, Sterling and Rock Falls are right by Dixon, Illinois, which is not far from Rockford. So if you're going up, that's up north, and you're coming down to Galesburg, and then you're going back up to Rock Falls, which Rock Falls is like right outside Sterling. It's not far from Sterling at all. So he went back up to Rock Falls, where his wife's ex-boyfriend lived with his girlfriend and her two-year-old son. Um... His name was Brock. He was Holly's ex, and Holly is Nicholas's current wife. His name was Brock Branson. He, however, was not home, but his roommate, 25-year-old Kenneth Ulve, if I say it, U-L-V-E, was home. Nicholas beat him to death with a hammer. Kenneth Ulve, Kenneth Ulve if that's the right pronunciation, was born... April 13th, 1983. He was a roofer for Terry Ratliff Construction. He was getting, he had a son named Caden. He was getting ready to move from that apartment a few days later. When the rest of the tenants got home, Nicholas killed all of them with a hammer, the same hammer. Brock Branson was born October 16th, 1978. He was a truck driver. He met his girlfriend, Kai that's K-Y-E, Blake, in Utah. She was born there in uh, May of 1988. So that's when she was born in Utah. He moved there to be with her. She was a single mother to her son, Dayan, D-A-Y-A-N. Brock had a 10-year-old daughter back at Rock, in Rock Falls, Illinois, so they moved back there so um, to be close to his daughter. And that's why they, they lived in Rock Falls. Nicholas, Nicholas Sheely showed no mercy to this family, not even the two-year-old. They were found on June 30th, 2008. Nick was, of course, Nicholas was nowhere to be found. Now, when Nick was in prison, he had a female pen pal from Festus, Missouri. And guess where he was headed next? Yep, Festus, Missouri. He went to find her, but he didn't know where she lived. And I'm thinking, I'm wondering if she used a P.O. box, which is very smart, especially if you're going to write someone in prison. Um, she was writing to him and liked him, but then she started getting creeped out by him and she broke it off, broke off all contact with him. Because around Christmas time, and I'm thinking, okay, this happened in 08, so around Christmas time, I'm thinking was 07, which was the Christmas before. Um... I'm thinking that's when it was, which is odd because he was married to Holly, you know, not unless this was years before, but I don't think it was because when I saw it on See No Evil, it sounded like it was pretty recent. Um, he contacted her around Christmas and he was being really, really pushy for her to leave her family. She was spending holidays with her family. He wanted her to just drop everything, leave her family and then come and meet with him. And he was getting real pushy and wouldn't take no for an answer. She broke all contact. Well, she worked at Lowe's. So, yeah, this had to have been recent. She worked at Lowe's. And um, he went to Lowe's in Festus, Missouri and asked around 
if Terry was working that day. I don't know what they said. He was on surveillance. Um, uh, you know, you, you can't hear what they're saying, but he kept loitering. And I really don't think she worked that day because of what happens later. But um, he kept loitering. So a manager, they called a manager. The manager talked to him. I don't know what he said to him. But after about 10 minutes, Nicholas left. But he wasn't giving up. He sat outside in the parking lot waiting. Talk about it's like stalking. Um, it was it was actually dark by then. He was still waiting for her to come out of Lowe's. Um, a hotel was right in view, so I'm thinking the hotel was not maybe even next to Lowe's, not far away. The parking lot at least was right there. There was a couple, Tom and Jill Estes. They were staying there in the hotel from Arkansas, attending a graduation party. They were returning to the hotel from the graduation party. Thomas was born in St. Louis. Jill was born March 13th, 1954, also in St. Louis. He worked for Union Pacific Railroad in Arkansas, and Jill worked with special needs elementary kids. They both were parents and grandparents, and that's why they moved to Arkansas, because he worked for the railroad. That night, Nicholas Sheely, being the angry psychopath, not being able to find Terry, had so much rage that he attacked this couple outside the hotel, beating them to death and putting both bodies in the back of Ronald Randall's truck. He was the guy from Galesburg. Um, this whole crime, why he killed these two, appeared to be a robbery for drug money. They were found June 30th. And according to um, See No Evil, they, had, they took their two dogs everywhere. They had two little dogs they took everywhere. The dogs... We're fine. Um, they act, the dogs actually went back to the entrance of the hotel. And the desk clerk at the front saw these two dogs just, you know, walking around in front of the hotel. And they appeared to have blood on them. And they thought, she thought the dogs were injured and called the police. Called, he didn't know what was going on. And the dogs were fine. So the blood, of course, was not the dog's blood. So then it became, that's when the police started getting involved and then they backtracked from Missouri on his blood trail. He left blood everywhere. He did not care about leaving evidence. I mean, it was almost almost like he just didn't care if he got caught. Police were desperate to find him. They had surveillance at a Walmart where he still had blood all over a Chicago Bears shirt. And I thought I read that he the Chicago Bear shirt was, um, I'm not even sure it was his. I think it was one of the victims, if I'm not mistaken. Because I read that he wore the victim's clothes. But he had blood all over the Chicago Bear shirt. And he was right there at Walmart. And he bought new clothes at Walmart. That's what he did. They ended up, the police did find, later, find the shirt in a dumpster with blood all over it. Um, other surveillance shows him at a gas station and he's got actual blood on his face. And I think that was done, that was taken in Galesburg, but it showed blood on his face. Still wearing, I, I, it seemed like that when he was still wearing the same shirt, but I'm not sure. I'd have to watch the See No Evil episode again, but it's like, you got blood on your face, blood on your shirt. Nobody does anything. They don't like, I mean, I, you can't tell on surveillance, but the police were not called. Uh, but of course, why would you call the police when you see somebody with blood stains on their shirt? I mean, I don't, you know, unless it's somebody that's wanted and you recognize him, you know. But um, it, <laughs> that's the only thing that I could think of is maybe they just didn't think that the police would do anything with blood, blood on the guy's shirt. I don't know. I just think it's very odd if I saw somebody with blood on his face and blood on his shirt. That would I would not be very comfortable at all with that. But anyway, that is what happened. Because on July 1st, he was spotted outside a Cardinal game, at a St. Louis Cardinal game. He asked somebody to use their phone, and then he deleted the call history. Later, they found that the calls were made to a drug house there in the area, a suspected, a suspected drug house. Well, later that same day, he was spotted again at a bar in Granite City, and the police were called. He was wanted. He was all over the TV and everything. They got him, and he surrendered peacefully. So like it was like he just didn't care. That I don't understand that. 
how you can just kill innocent people and just like, oh, just go about your day. Don't care if I get called. Leave, I, I mean, it just, or don't care if I get caught. It's just strange, especially a two-year-old child. You know, that's very sadistic. This guy has kids and he kills a two-year-old child. That just makes me so sick. He got life in prison for the six Illinois victims and no parole. Also in Missouri. Now, Missouri has a death penalty. Illinois doesn't. So in Missouri, he pled guilty to the Estes couple's murder outside the hotel. And that took the death penalty off the table. He got life for killing them in Missouri. So he's got life in prison. Um, I don't really understand why he wanted to have the death penalty taken off the table. A lot of these people just want to die. You know, then spend the rest of their life locked up. But um, he quoted Shawshank Redemption. I don't know the line. But he quoted that movie at his Missouri trial during sentencing. He claimed that he regretted his actions. But... The families of the victims were not impressed. I'm wondering if he quoted Shawshank when, uh, um, what's his name? The main, Andy Dufresne. I can't think of the guy's name in real life. Tim Robbins? Tim Robbins. Um, when he went for, oh no, he didn't go for parole. It was Mar Morgan Freeman went for parole, but I don't think, I don't think he would have quoted him. Um, he may have. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he quoted, but, um, the families were not impressed. So, Nicholas and Holly Sheely divorced in 2013. He is serving time at the Lawrence County Correctional Center. And that is the story of Nicholas Sheely, which I just don't understand at all. Like I said, I don't understand any of these, but I really don't get it. I don't understand. I've never heard. I mean, I know people will do what all they can to get money for drugs if they're really addicted, but this is way over the top. I mean, and I mean, just for him to do this and hide bodies every, well, I mean, he had the one guy behind high V and not get caught. I don't know if he did all these at night. I don't know, but this is such a sad case. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I don't know if anybody has heard of this case. I have not, believe it or not, but, um, that is just, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, but um, I hope, well, I know I can't say I hope you enjoyed the episode, maybe. <laughs> but um, I do hope you enjoy my podcast. And thank, I want to thank everybody for your support. Um, I watched, my mom recommended it, and I watched it. An old, <laughs> an old movie called The Last Picture Show. I don't know if anybody's seen that. I wasn't. It was okay, but I like Paper Moon way better. They're both by director Peter Bogdanovich, and they're both in black and white, and they're both made in the early 70s. I like Paper Moon a lot better. But um, my mom loved it. I, I got it and watched it, and then I I um I let her have it because I know she really liked it. But um, it didn't seem like there was much of a plot to it. I had no idea what the plot was going to be about. And I know it's a big favorite. Um, a lot of people loved it. I just wasn't understanding and I didn't know that it was going to be the way it was. <laughs> My mom recommended this movie and if you know what's in this movie. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I was just going to talk about that that I watched as I usually end my episodes with new, oh, with new recommendations. Also on ID, I started watching Mother May I Murder. Boy, that's something. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe these mothers that put their kids up to killing people. But that's a brand new series on ID, so check that one out too. Um, I think American Monster's over now. I'm still watching um, People Magazine Investigates, but I, I didn't watch last this last one. Another one I'm really enjoying is Very Scary People. That's been on a while. Um and I can watch it on Max, and then ID also shows it. Um, boy, that one really shows a lot about the people. Um, I recently, I, I, I caught the dating game killer one, which a lot of the stuff I didn't know. They really tell you a lot because it's always done in two parts. So it, I know people probably have caught have seen that, but that's a a big recommendation also. 
other than that, I don't think I've actually watched anything. I started watching Full Circle the um, on Max, which is a series, and boy, that's good. I'm only two episodes in. We had trouble with our internet connecting, and then all of a sudden, our smart TV, like, did some... When, when I get on the premium channels, it's changed. Like, it looks different. So I don't know if they did some update, and I don't know what happened, but it's been coming in. Knock on wood. I don't want to say that, you know. I don't want to, like, you know, mess up now that I said that. <laughs> but um, that's all for today. And I hope everybody enjoyed this one. A nice little coffee break. And I will hopefully be back next week trying to find some more. I really need suggestions if anybody's interested and wants me to cover something in the Midwest area. I really like the real old ones. But I will... um. I'll cover anything old or new. We got some new cases here that had just happened. Um, matter of fact, there was one case that first case ever in Illinois. I'm thinking it was in the whole state of Illinois, not just this, not just the town, um, where they convicted somebody without a body. And that one's very interesting, but it's new and nothing much has come out yet. I don't even know if the guys went, I don't think the guys even went to trial yet on that. That's like really recent. And then there's been a couple other ones that have happened. But I, I there's nothing out there yet to tell. But those are definitely in my file, true crime file. <laughs> so that's all for today, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any suggestions, I will leave everything in the show notes. Email, Instagram, Facebook, uh, X now, which was Twitter. And uh, Java Mama. So everyone have a wonderful week and enjoy the weather out there. Stay cool. And I will see you next time.